Hey there, good Sunday morning. <laughs> Happy St. Patrick's Day. Welcome to Weekend Recharge. I'm Paul Goodlow here with Lynette Charles and Molly McCullum. And Lynette Charles is not wearing green. I so know, I'm getting I mean, I should have brought my dress up here because I actually did bring my she green did. dress. I saw but... it. She brought one in. Mm -hmm. um, it did not work on the green screen. Yes. So here she is in beautiful red. <sighs> That's his small violin. <laughs> it's the south, so it's a fiddle. We're in the south, so I, I play a fiddle. You can tell by the stomping of the foot. Uh, I'm so bummed, though. I wanted to wear my green today. Uh, I, uh, Paul said this doesn't count. It's very dark it green. It's, it's, it's a teal. It's She's a teal. escaping the pinch for now. <laughs> <laughs> well, America's weekend depends on the weather, and your St. Patrick's Day depends on the weather, too. Some spots will have the, all the luck. And not others, because you'll be seeing storms. Kind of an air mass change coming in with this, although temporarily. Yes, I hope the spring breakers know the clothes that they need because, you know, it's going to be hot, then it's going to be chilly for sure. Let's talk about what's going on more down to the south as this system continues to push on off towards the east. And yes, we won't be dealing with, um, uh, I'd say, a deluge all day. The are ramping up across Boston, arguably the center of the Irish American heritage. And we've got some clouds in place today, but the iconic parade is set to get underway by 1 p.m. this afternoon. Will the weather cooperate? That's always the big question when you have an outdoor event like a big parade and a lot of people planning on celebrating. The rain should be out of here, so this is good news. Yes, we've got the clouds and the rain right now, but once we get to around the lunchtime hour, this starts to clear out. Our temperatures are cooperating, so I think we should be good to go in, in a place like Boston. Now, other places that we have rain, a few raindrops for you in New York City, but that's on its way out. We head up to Portland, Maine. You're also seeing a few raindrops and even some snow mixed in some of of our highest elevations, but as a whole, it's it's a little bit more of a messy system. It's not clear cut as far as where the cold air is and where it's going to stay. It's all mixed in, and because of that, some people will see a few snowflakes mixed with some colder rain. It's not going to be until the system moves out and we get this truly cold air on the backside of the system that's going to move in. That's going to provide us with some lake effect snow in places like the Tug Hill Plateau, Buffalo, some of the South Towns. You could see some snow. I don't think we're going to see much by the way of accumulation, but snow will be falling and rain. We're almost done. We're not expect. Here's uh, what we're looking at as far as the accumulation uh, of snow three to five inches across the Tug Hill Plateau. That's nothing for that area and it's going to melt really quickly when we see a warm up over the next couple of days after we get some of this cold air out. As far as snowfall goes, the Great Lakes, we are very far behind. No question. We know that it's been a weird winter overall and this is the last weekend of winter. Marquette, look at that, leading the pack with near nearly 80 inches below average snowfall wise. That's that's really impressive and not the kind of numbers you like to see. Erie, Pennsylvania, you're in a similar boat where you're 73, almost 74 inches below average and more than a half. In an ongoing battle against climate change and rougher oceans, some Massachusetts homeowners, well, they paid for a $600,000 seawall to protect them from rising sea levels and persistent flooding and beach erosion. But last weekend, a coastal storm moved through and destroyed the wall only 72 hours after the wall was completed. Christina Hager with our partners at WBZ gives us a firsthand look at the damage. Yeah, we're still tracking more winter storms that could cause mm -hmm. more damage, but this one is going to actually bring some damage to perhaps uh, your psyche because we, we're thinking we're done with winter, but not so fast. Detroit, mm -hmm. we got some snow by the end of the week. And it's not just Detroit. There's many areas that have seen this big rapid warm up, and all of a sudden we are bringing snow back into the conversation. So we want to show you two different model solutions, starting with the European model, and we're going to put this forward in time and show you what we're expecting as the system comes in the later half of the week. You can see in snow spreading across Green Bay, Detroit, Cleveland, Columbus, Pittsburgh, many areas that you were like, okay, are, are we done yet? Yeah, we're not quite done. No. Even another system as we head towards next weekend. That's the European model. The American model is far more uh, bullish on more snow with this system, starting with some snow showers Thursday exiting New England, but this system coming across the Great Lakes looking for colder air, so more snow, widespread snow, that also pushing back across the Northeast as we head on towards the weekend before another system comes through. So 
We know a storm's coming, but it's about how much of the snow we'll see. I will say, though, it's been pretty typical of this winter that the American model, at least this far out, tends to put these huge yeah. amounts up and then slowly tapers them down as we get towards the actual event. So this is the uh, the European model, or yeah, the European model showing you this the snowfall with the heaviest snow, perhaps towards northern Wisconsin, some of our higher elevations of New England. The American model. Different solution. Yeah, more widespread snow, mm -hmm. but the heavier snow, parts of New England and then parts of the Midwest. So the um, you haven't devils in the details. I haven't got that out, but one thing we do know, we, we, we need seen it. that much yeah. snow. Everyone is below average in snowfall across this region. Lynette? All right, yeah, let's talk. <laughs> How'd you do what I go like? Yeah. Uh -huh. <laughs> See, you know, I, and actually, you know, people have been, they know about man spreading. Yes. That's lava spreading. It's, it's even worse. Than I think the man spreading is way worse. Lava way worse. Spreading. Especially burn things up. Though. When you are a short person on a plane that's sitting next to two little people. Okay, <laughs> little people. I am not a tall person, and if I sit between two taller guys like Paul Goodlow on a plane, they invade my space. First of Man all, spreading. you should ride in the overhead. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, this is half past the hour rolling on here on Paul Goodlow. I'm Molly McCollum. <laughs> and I'm Lynette Charles. This week begins with another pocket. round of storms. You guys are not talking about putting stuff in your pocket. We're talking about the severe Tell thunderstorms. I, I know, exactly. So we do have another round of thunderstorms that are going to move into this week. <laughs> yeah, we do. Darn. All right. <laughs> All right, Paul, get her done. I like that. Let's take a virtual view of Buffalo now. A view, uh, chance of rain and snow means that you really can't be outside for today. So you might want to do something inside, like maybe enjoy the Buffalo International Jewish Film Festival. I'm curious in Buffalo. Uh, do you want this snow or are you just like it's been a terrible winter i'm over it let's just let's just move yeah. on with spring um either way either way you feel we're going to see snow this week yeah we are going to get that snow in here so let's take a look at what's going on as we go through your monday more of that but look at the temperature number in the 30s so yeah mid 30s if it does happen it's going to be that wet snow for sure heavy wet yeah. snow now there's not going to be a lot you know at most three to five inches of snow in the tug hill plateau you go down towards the erie uh the lake erie snow belt and we're talking very little accumulation, but you have to remember the most accidents happen in the smallest amounts of snow, even if you're very accustomed to driving in winter weather. Yeah, I think people get a little overconfident for right. sure. <laughs> so let's talk about the Great Lakes and we can see that that deficit. Uh, so we are below close to 80 inches in Marquette, Michigan. Whew. Wow. And, yeah. you know, Erie, Pennsylvania, you're kind of in a similar boat. We're just over 70 inches below average. And these kind of numbers, I mean, they're not what you want to see, especially when you take into account that a lot of um, winter recreation, mm -hmm. people that rely on the snow economy wise, it was it was a really rough year. Yeah, we're seeing some uh, some rain right now in Burlington. Temperature coming at about 45 degrees, but not the best day the further to the north you go growing with the next total solar eclipse on the horizon. The rare cosmic event has people looking up where wherever they are. And some people don't think of New York City as a good place for stargazing, but one man is turning the urban streets into a planetarium. The Weather Channel's Katie Chatron spent time with an 82-year-old amateur astronomer, Joe DeFlossi, who is helping, his mission is helping people experience the skies. A, a quick virtual visit to the banks of the Ohio River in Cincinnati. A beautiful March day is in progress with sunshine, but you know what? We'll have that chilly high temperature, about 50 degrees. That's only about 5 degrees below average, but it's going to feel much colder because we've been feeling so warm, right? Uh, nighttime lows will dip below freezing just about every single day this week. So this is what we have on tap, right? We're going to be watching those ups and downs as we continue through the rest of your Sunday. There's that 50 as we go into your Monday, there's the 40, and then we go right back up as we head towards your Tuesday. So if you didn't know that spring is right, a cor right around the corner, this basically will tell you that. We can, should be right around 54 now for this time of the year. So as we continue through the rest of today, we can see that jet stream more bottled up to the north, right? It's not going to stay that way, though. It looks good and feels good down off towards the south, but yeah, we'll start to dip in and get some of that cooler air. Unfortunately, you know, we've been planting those plants, and with that, uh, we could be seeing some problems because Oh, yeah, we're going to get to freezing in some spots. I'll show you that in a matter of moments. But for today, we're looking at the 40s. Look at that 30s, I should say, around Minneapolis, Chicago, picking up on that as well. And then as we go into early next week, there's that big dip in the jet stream, and that is going to encompass uh, 
portions of Tennessee as well. And we can see that those high temperatures will be about 5 to 15 degrees below average in a lot of spots. Look at this. Headed all the way over towards Texas before it's all said and done, right? Midland, you're going to be getting in on it as well. So here are those uh, lows freezing, below freezing, I should say, Tuesday morning. And again, this dips all the way down off towards Birmingham. Augusta, Little Rock is going to be in on this as well. And there are those freeze warnings and those freeze watches Monday night right into Tuesday morning. Guys, people definitely need to cover those plants for sure. Yeah, the early First, your seven day stretch. We have a system that's been meandering over the four corners for several days now, and it's going to continue to do so today. We also have rain moving along the Gulf Coast states and potentially some severe weather deeper into the afternoon. Then we turn the page to Monday, the start of a new week, and we're much colder in places like Chicago as well as Atlanta as colder air spills in. This cold snap is going to be very brief. By, by Tuesday, we're already back into the 60s in Atlanta, Chicago well into the 50s. So if you're not a fan of winter time, and spring officially begins this week, by the way, the winter snap is going to be very, very brief. As we get into Wednesday, the middle part of the week, we have more moisture moving into the Pacific Northwest areas like Seattle seeing rain, Denver sunshine melting all the snow that we just saw. By the end of the week, we bring our next system now into places like Dallas, rain, severe weather potential, but also watch this system move across the Great Lakes, bringing more snow to many places and even lake effect snow as we move into next Next weekend, very active across the northern tier, the Pacific Northwest, and the South.